What about formal fallacies? There is an easy way to determine if an argument contains any formal fallacies, and that is to draw a truth table and to see if there are any cases in which there are true premises and a false conclusion. I will show you how to draw a truth table. In order to draw a truth table, the first thing we need to do is to find the terms being used by the argument and assign them to variables. In the ontological argument, there are four terms being used. A maximally great entity, possibly existing, existing in a possible universe, and existing in all possible universes. Let's assign these three terms to these variables. M will equal maximally great entity. P will equal possibly exists. U will equal existing in a possible universe. And A will be existing in all possible universes. Now we need to draw a grid to put the truth values in. On the first row, the grid, the first four columns, we will have to put the four variables of our four terms. The fifth column will have the first premise. Positive statements such as P are Q or P is Q can accurately be formulated as a conditional if P then Q. The symbol we will use for the conditional will be the right arrow. The next column we will have the second premise. The next one we will have the third premise the minus sign will represent the negation function and the last one we will have the conclusion E is being used to represent the function of ass assuming existence the truth table should look like this let us simplify this formula now it should look like this Now we must put all possible truth values in the first four columns. To do this, first you must know how many cases there should be. To know this, multiply the number of terms by the power of 2. 4 times 4 equals 16. Therefore, we need 16 cases. Next, to fill in the columns the easiest and quickest way, Start with the fourth column, draw in a T, then an F, then a T, then an F again. Do this 16 times going down until the column is filled. In the third column, draw a T, then a T, then an F, and then another F, and keep doing this all the way down the column. Keep multiplying the number of consecutive T's and S by 2 until you have finished the first four columns. After you have finished doing that, the truth table should look like this. Now we must figure out what truth values should be assigned to the functions in each proposition. To do this, you should first start with the functions that are inside the parentheses. Let's start with if m then p. The next thing you need to know are the rules to use to find the, va the truth values for the functions. Here are the rules. Negation is the opposite value of the original variable. Conjunction if one variable has an f value, the conjunct has an also has an f value. Otherwise, it will have a t value. Disjunction. If one variable has a t value, then the disjunct also has a t value. Otherwise, it will have an f value. Conditional. If the antecedent, the first variable, 
has a value of t, and the consequent, the second variable, has a value of f, then the conditional also has a value of f. Otherwise, it will have a value of t. By a conditional, if, if both variables have a value of t, or if they both have a value of f, then the by conditional will have a value of t. Otherwise, it will have a value of f. Exists. Despite the value of the original variable, the exists functions will always have a value of t. Let's do the first condition. In, in the first case, since the consequent p has a value of t, then the condition in the first case also will have a value of t. In the second case, it is the same. The third and fourth case is also the same. In the fifth case, however, because m has a value of t and p has a value of f, that means the conditional also has a value of f. With practice, you can finish this entire truth table on your own. But for the sake of the video, I will complete this truth table. After the truth table is complete, it should look like this. Take a close look at this truth table. If the ontological argument for the existence of God is invalid in its form, there will be at least one case that has all t values in the premises and an f value in the conclusion. Do you see where there is a case that has all t values in the premises and an f value in the conclusion? If you have said yes, please take another look. There isn't one. That means the ontological argument is formally valid with no formal fallacies. To do this, we must group the premises into conjuncts and add in a conditional in between the premises and the conclusion. The up arrow will represent the, conjun the conjunctional function. Here is what the truth table should look like after we have reformatted the formula. Now let's assign the values to the conjuncts and the conditions we added. The conjuncts we added simply group the premises together, while the condition we added asks if the conclusion follows from the premises. After you have completed the truth table, it should look like this. As we can see, the ontological argument for the existence of God, proven by truth tables in modern logic, contains no formal or informal fallacies. Thus, it is valid and sound. The only sound objection you may have to this argument is whether or not you want to call this maximally great entity God, or if you can prove that this maximally great entity does not possibly exist. If the God you believe in is maximally great, you are justified in saying that this maximally great entity is your God. The only case in which you cannot say this entity is your God is if this entity has been discovered to have qualities that are not in the description of your God. I hope this video has heightened your ability to objectively and unbiasedly analyze controversial issues using logic and truth tables.